Well, I'm up at Manx Telecom HQ and uh, talking with David Smith about a subject that seems to have excited the Isle of Man suddenly. Phone boxes. I mean, they, they have been disappearing for a while, but suddenly people are now coming forward. They don't want you to take them anymore. What, what's going on? Yeah, there's a lot of interest at the moment in this, Paul. And I think it's important just to start with perhaps dealing with some misconceptions around exactly what we're doing. And first off, we have 118 payphones across the island. 81 of which are the traditional red uh, phone kiosk, if you like, and we are not removing them all. It's important to state that. Every year we review how they perform, and what we're talking about at the moment is six payphones, which give us less than £10 each per year in terms of revenue. They are hugely unprofitable. So it's the, those six payphones which are currently under review at this moment in time. So some are going though. I mean, you definitely put notices. We've got pictures of Craig Nish here, and you, you put in there, for instance, which is one of those iconic ones. It's, it's turned into for a lot of people that that is about to be removed. It, it, will, it will actually will disappear, or do people have a chance to save it? it there is a chance to save it. And um, when the six payphones were reviewed just a few weeks ago, it obviously generated quite a bit of interest, which we've we've reacted to. And we're very sensitive to our, our place in the community here. So you know, we have listened to some of the feedback and suggestions that have come in. So as it stands, and the discussion is, is still ongoing, Paul, but there's essentially two options. So if a local authority wanted to maintain any one of those six payphones, they could do. And what we ask for is a contribution of £300 per annum, which is literally half of the cost of maintaining that payphone over the course of a year, uh, to keep it going on an annual basis. Um, the second option, if a local authority or indeed a local organisation wasn't especially interested in keeping the payphone going but had an interest in the kiosk itself, we've followed a scheme which is common in the UK, BT have an adopt a phone scheme. Um, effectively we're rolling out a similar process here in the Isle of Man. So if a local authority or organisation wanted to adopt a red phone kiosk, they could do for a nominal fee and all we would ask is that organisation then maintained and carried on the ongoing liability of that particular payphone. Have you not thought about taking some of those modern ones, which no one presumably has any interest in, and, and replacing them with the old ones in the places that there's going to be more traffic? It's, it's extremely costly to do, and I think it's worth reiterating that our payphones are unprofitable. Um, the six we're talking about take less than £10 per annum, and cost something like £600 a year to, to maintain. Will there come so, a point then will there be no payphones on the old man because presumably everyone has got access to a mobile? There will never be a time when payphones don't exist on the, on the Isle of Man. There will always be payphones here because what we're talking about is a very small percentage of our overall payphones. And some take a decent amount of money, but many don't. So they will be maintained um, over the course of many years to come. And are they still card and, and money? Because I mean, at one stage everything was moving towards cards before mobiles. Where are we with, with these boxes now? Well, that's the point. Most people will now use their mobile phones. So yes, they're card uh, operating machines, but in the main, our customers are using mobile phones. So even though in the grander scheme of things, perhaps it's not a huge amount of money, this is still investment that we could make in other parts of our business. Next year we roll out a world-class 4G service and that as a priority for the infrastructure of the Isle of Man and for our customers is priority number one. And I would argue that unprofitable payphones is not. Why suddenly has there been this interest? Because I mean, you, you've been removing them for some time, right? Is this because you, you've been more open by putting up notices or have you always done that? We've always done that. I, I, I can't put my finger on why, why this has generated any particular interest over previous years, but this has been an ongoing process o over many years. Each year we review the performance of those payphones and then review accordingly. So this is a process that's been going on for some time. But I think the important thing at the moment is we've, we've listened to some of that feedback and we've come up with two proposals, both of which try to balance the commercial sensitivity and the role and, and the sensitivity of those phone boxes in, in the community itself. Presumably someone can buy one, if they if offer you the money, would you sell it to them? Well, I mean, I'll leave it where it is, but would you actually go into, into partnership with an, an individual who just wants to look after it? I'd prefer not to do that. I, I don't think that's in the interests of, of 
the feedback we've had today, and I also have to say that a lot of our customers have taken the time to, to write to us and say they don't want pay phones in the community. It is not just a, an argument from, uh, you, you, there is a perception here that everybody wants to hang on to pay phones. That's not the case. But I think what we've, what we've come up here with is a, is a suggestion where if a community really wants to hang on to a red phone kiosk, there is a way they can do it. And more importantly, they have the flexibility to do whatever they like with that kiosk. And there's been some really interesting ideas come forward. But the ones that get removed, what happens to them? Do you sell them? Do you make money at them? Because there must be a bit of market in, the, in these quite old phone boxes now. Yeah, there's, there's actually a lot on, on, on the marketplace in the UK for sale because um, they are very unwieldy structures to deal with. They weigh three tons. They're very, very difficult to move and maintain and very costly to maintain as well. So in terms of what happens to these pay phones, should they be removed ultimately? We haven't decided. In the past, we've donated some to charity auctions, uh, we've donated some to, to museums, and some we've sold off, but we'll review that once we're through this process.